Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. This time we're going to take a look at building a simple gear and then we're going to see how to modify it to make a simple gear with Idler. So I have my base platform here that we used in a prior video and now we're going to add these parts. So let's get started with the gears. We're going to need two of these 60 tooth gears and we're going to need one 12 tooth gear. For each gear we are going to need a drive shaft. So I've got three drive shafts, or also called axles, and in this case we've used a four inch length. We're also going to need a handle to turn the whole assembly. For each drive shaft, I'm going to need two locking collars. Now locking collars are going to come in two varieties. One is going to be this metal kind. This is the older style, and the way this works is you would run an axle through the locking collar and then I'm going to take a 564 hex wrench and I'm going to go to this set screw here and I'm just going to tighten that set screw down and once that's tightened if it's been tightened correctly this will not move around on the axle hence the name locking collar now I only need a half turn and this will loosen up Notice a half turn is all that's needed. These things have a really tiny set screw. And we can see here, if I take that out, just how small that piece is. It is not big at all. And when you look at it, you can see why this would be a very easy piece to lose. And it does happen. I've seen adults, I've seen students who um, will accidentally take these out and lose them. So you never really need to ever take them out completely. So all you need is about a half turn if it's tightened on an axle. Now I said there's two varieties. There's another variety that has been developed. It's more commonly used, or it's starting to be more commonly used now. And one of the reasons is it removes that set screw altogether. It's not needed. Now this new version is a rubber piece and it's very tightly fits over here. So one or two of them slipped over the edge and it can serve the same process as a locking collar. Teachers have reported that they will take these out of commission when they use the rubber ones and save these for competition or demo pieces. Okay, so now for each axle we also need two of these three hole spacers. Now the three hole spacers look like this and what's important to note is that this is the front. On the back here, we can see that there's these little notches. And those notches fit into the holes on your metal. And when they do that, this thing kind of helps hold it into place. They fit into those holes. Now for every one of these, we're going to need two of these rivets. Now rivets come in two pieces. They come as this piece that looks kind of like a thumbtack and this piece that is a sleeve that goes around the thumbtack. Now if we look closely at the sleeve, we notice that the end has these notches that stick out. And what happens is, is when you push this all the way through, those notches splay out and kind of grip the metal so that it doesn't pull through as easily. And then I've also got two of my L keys. Oops, I almost forgot this. For each axle we also want one of the spacers. There's actually two sizes of spacers. I'm going to go with the smaller one. So let's get started. I'm going to start by taking the gears and preparing an axle to go through them. And for the larger gears, I'm going to take the axle and I'm going to put the locking collar and then I'm going to push this and make it nice and flat on the top before I lock it down so that it's flush on the end. And I might hold my thumb into place kind of help ensure that it's I don't accidentally push it through. I'm going to do that with both of my larger ones. So and then hold that in place, lock that down. Whoops, I can already feel I didn't I must have and that's something that happens sometimes when taking this out people will twist slightly. Um, so make sure you're pulling that out straight. Now with the smaller gear, I'm actually not going to make it flush. I'm going to have it down a little bit. 
I'm going to go ahead and put a locking collar down, but there's a chance I'm going to end up moving that at some point after I assemble the whole piece. So I'm going to set these aside because I don't need those at the moment. We need to first get our platform ready. So let's move a few of these pieces to the side so we can see what we're doing. Now, the way these work is I'm they go in like this. One hole is filled by the axle, the other two holes by the rivets. That's why we need two of these rivets for every spacer. So I'm going to kind of look and see where I want to place this. And let's say I want to place it here. If I just place it through the middle, it rubs against the metal. You can hear that. If I place it up at the top, that can work too. But then when I'm attaching things, I'm going to have to deal with the fact that it's right up against that metal. So nothing prevents you from doing that, but I'm going to move it down one spot here. So now that I've marked my spot, I need that three-hole spacer here. But I need to put these thumbtacks or these rivets into place. And I don't want to have to reach behind to fit it in. So instead, I'm going to put this on the back side. And once I have that in a position, I'm going to use my rivet. Now, the rivet's going to go in. You want spacer, metal, then the rivet. This helps to add stability once it is fully put into place. So I'm just going to put that in there. And then if you listen, you hear that little tiny, tiny snap. Do it again. There we go. That snap is indicated that it's pushed in. And if you look carefully here, we can see right there it's sticking through and it's splayed out so it's kind of got a grip you do not want to place the rivets in this way i was doing that for a long time out of a mistake and when you do this this whole assembly is actually kind of wobbly against the metal and that's not going to be very good for build okay so let's go ahead i'm going to put another one over here and let's just shove my rivets into place I'm leaving the center open so that I can put this in. Now, I want to get one of my spacers, and I'm going to put it on this side, the side that I'm going to stick into the metal. That way, there's a gap between the metal and the gear. And then I'm going to put a locking collar. I'm going to put that locking collar on the back side. I'm going to kind of get this just right. Now, I have found that, and a lot of people find that, having a second person helps. But if you do not have a second person, what I tend to find myself doing is I will grip it like this, putting pressure here and here on that locking collar and squeezing as tight as I can while I tighten that down. And that way, if I can get it tightened down just right, which I messed up there, if I tighten it just right, this assembly doesn't come off. Okay, so let's look at now at our small gear. I want the small gear here. So let's find the spot. I'm going to put it here, and we see it doesn't, um, the grooves do not line up. So I need to move one spot closer, and there the grooves line up. If I actually turn this one, we can see the larger gear is turning. So that's what I want. So let's put the spacer in, let's put that on there, and then, whoops, what did I forget? Yep, I forgot my spacer. So you can put these in any orientation. So I'm going to do this one vertically, and let's just put those in. Um, and I'm just doing that for space because when we modify this for the simple gear with idler, um, it helps to make sure that I don't have everything. Um, I, I, it's going to help with spacing when I do that. Now for the hard part. Reach in there. Get that position just right. There we go. Now for the second one. Flip that around. And we just need to shove that in and put this 
locking collar into place. And tighten that locking collar down. Now I wasn't gripping like this, but what I'm doing is I'm taking several fingers and I'm gripping the axle and pushing in at the same time to tighten it down. So um, that should be good. Okay, so now we've got a simple gear built. So let's go ahead and here's my handle. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach the handle to the axle. And let's turn it make sure it works. There we go. Notice it's not very noisy. If you hear a lot of metal, it might mean that you've missed putting these on or you have these a little too loose. Okay. Now the reason why this axle is sticking out, if I did not, I'm going to put it on this back axle, the handle over here, but I'm going to shove it in further and here's what happens. It's hitting the other axle because these two are too close together. So if I wanted to see what happens when I turn this one, I can put the axle on the front instead of on the back. Okay, and this is how you build a simple gear. Now I mentioned we're going to show how to modify this for a simple gear with idler. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a third gear. And when I do this, I'm just going to turn around and find the opening that I need. That didn't work, so I'm going to come over. That's the opening. So now I just turn around and add my anchors. And I'm going to put another anchor on the back. And then all I need to do is tighten this thing down and add that gear. And I'm going to have a simple gear with idler. So thankfully, this is a real easy addition or change to make. Um, it doesn't take much effort, which means that once you've tried building a simple gear, add this idler gear just so you can kind of, or add that third gear so that you can see how this impacts the system. Okay. So there we go. That's how to build a simple gear and a simple gear with idler. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all our other gear videos that we're going to make as well as any other tutorial here at MythBadger Videos.